You will win the war, not the battle. You don't never need to win another battle. Win the war. What's the war? My son's getting married. What's the war? Have enough money for <laughs> create jobs for my kids. That's the war. <laughs> what they do with the money, that's their battle. That's not my battle no more. You spend it wisely, that's on you. you. You blow it, that's on you. Take care of my wife, get her to California. That's the war. The battle is what the house looked like on the inside. That's not my fight. Whatever you want in there, have it. That's, your, that's up to you. Just if I can get one room where I can put all my football helmets, all the places I spoke, all the paraphernalia, jerseys, signs, jersey, I just need one wall, you can have the rest of the house. Why? Because I'd rather for you to have it the way you want it and have a marriage than to have all the rooms look like I have and be by myself. We all have 24 hours, all right? What makes some of us average, makes some of us good, some of us great, is not the family you was born into, right? It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with your socioeconomic status. It has everything to do with how you command your life. So if you have a bad day, which is no such thing of, it doesn't exist, you had a bad moment and you were so immature that you let that moment dictate the rest of your day, right? And y'all not kids no more. I don't do elementary school. Right? I don't do elementary school because they really, a, element, a fifth grader, if I'm talking to a third grader, fourth grader, fifth grader, kindergartner, I don't care what I tell them, they're not at a place of maturity where they can switch their mindset. They're kids, you grown. And some of you are grown, but you're still a child. And you brag about how you're an adult. You're only an adult because of your age. You're not an adult because you command your life. You're an adult because of your age. And that's not what makes adulthood. You're not an adult because you are 18 years old, you're 25, 26. If you, if you still kept catching temper tantrums, you're still getting attitudes. That, that means you're not an adult in that area. That means that particular area controls you, right? You almost got into a car accident, car accident over with. Car accident been over with 10 hours ago, you still pissed about it. Or you didn't got into it with your friend. That happened two days ago and y'all still not talking. That's immaturity. Right? And let me tell you something. You don't know how many days you have. Like, I'm just going to keep it 100. You don't know how many days you have left. You don't want to be wasting days. Like, you, you're, not, you're, not a, you're not God. Like, you don't create. You, don't, you can't wake yourself up. You don't know how many days you have left. You can't be playing with the days you have on foolishness. So you, you have to learn how to control yourself. Right? And so y'all know my circumstances. I'm not here because I'm sweet. I'm here because one day I was like, yo, you need to get a control of this, bro. You need to get control of your life. You do not have control. You watch a dog on TV playing video games and you should be out here grinding. So there are people all the day, all people on ET. Bro, you do not want to be me. You're not ready for this grind, bro. Some of you, you can show up when you're at home, when you go on the road, you struggle, meaning that when things are going the way you want, you cool, but when it rains you, like, you got to grow up. Like, your body does not control you. If the money, if I got to get up early in the morning and get the money, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a morning person. If I got to go play somebody in their hometown and they got home go to bed, I'm about to come bring the heat. Like, listen to me, like, you got to stop playing. So most of you, what happens is when everything is favorable, you a beast. Make sure you understand what I'm saying. When everything is favorable, meaning like whatever conditions you like, when those conditions are right, you a beast. But when the conditions ain't right, you get smacked in the face. You gotta grow up. You gotta make, you gotta make every, you gotta make, you gotta be a morning person, afternoon person, night person. You gotta be at home person, on the road person. You gotta be when you, when you, when you feel good person, when you sick person, when you tired person. I took it offensive. My man looked at me, you tired. I'm like, bro, have you lost your mind? I'm about to kill it. But I had to do back-to-back -back speeches. Four o'clock to five, then they wanted me to wait to eight to start again. I had to sit there for three hours and wait and came and like, let's go. Each one of us, the things that you don't have control over is the things that's keeping you from being sweet. And at what point are you gonna fight against that, that nature in you that you know so if I was to ask most of you, you already know what your challenge is. You ain't dumb, you know what it is. You just don't fight it. And I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you to fight it.
And the only reason you're having a bad day is because of what you're thinking about. Now, I read something that said that the human brain is phenomenal and it can think like of a million and something different things, right? It's just, it's explosive. But the one thing it cannot do is it cannot think of two ideas at the exact same time. It does not have the capacity to think of two things at once. Now, it has the capacity in the hour to think about a whole bunch of stuff, but at one particular moment, it cannot think about more than one thing. So if you are having a bad day or having a bad moment, it means you're probably focusing on what? Whatever that bad thing is, that's what you're focusing on. That's why your life messed up, because you focus on the stuff that's wrong. You're not putting the same energy on what's right. And it's just weird how we are as humans. We notice the bad and we talk about the bad, but we don't notice the good and talk about the good. We don't harp on the good. And that's what you do wrong. You focus so much on the negative that you forget all the positive. And then when you do think about the positive, you're not putting the energy in the positive like you put in the negative. So it's no secret. You are where you are because you're focusing on stuff you ain't got no business focusing on. Those of you who know anything about a uh, 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 basketball in the United States, there was a guy uh, once named Michael Jordan. And, and, and when Michael Jordan, at the end of the year, he would win, he would win what's called the shooting contest. And so throughout the whole year, he might have averaged 32 points. He, he had the most points of any other basketball player as it relates to points in the game. You pay close attention, the guy that was in second place might have averaged 30 points and the guy under him might have averaged 29 points. Listen to me, this is important. But because Michael Jordan scored 32, he made millions more than everybody else because he was the top as it relates to scoring. For those of us who know about uh, the game of basketball in America, for, for each shot is worth two points. So in actuality, Michael Jordan only scored one more possibly, possibly, and I don't think he did, two more baskets a game than the average person, but this guy was a millionaire and made more money than anybody else because of one shot. I need you to understand this. He was known around the world as one of the most popular athletes in the world has made more money hand over foot than any athlete in the world. Why? Not because he made 10 more shots. Not because he made five more shots. The guy only made one or two more shots a game over the course of his career than everybody else. And he's better, makes more money, lived a better life than everybody because he sacrificed enough to get those one or two shots. And I'm telling you, you're not where you want to be financially and it's not going to take 20 shots. You're not where you want to be in your marriage and it's not going to take 20 shots. You are not where you want to be in your personal life. You are not the person you want to be and it's not going to take you 20 shots. For some of you, it's one more shot. For some of you, it's two more shots and you have not given yourself enough credit to say, I just need to get up a half hour earlier and my whole life will change. I just need to get up one hour early. I just need to work one hour longer. To stop hitting that snooze button. If you were to make that one change, that one sacrifice, you would stop dream dreaming and start living it. It is literally at the darkest moment, right? When it dawns. You don't really even get to the next level to your darkest moments. One of the things that I think is important is that a lot of you uh, young people, you, you go in this route and you like, I don't see it. You're not supposed to see it. Like you're supposed to stay focused on what you focus on. And when you get to where you get to, you'll understand why you were doing this in the first place. It, it is literally at the darkest moment. So that's why I'm saying stop tripping when it get dark and you running. You running from your success. I never quit because I realized, like, why would you do something for 10 years, then quit? Why would you do something for 11 years, then quit? 
So for a lot of you, you if you was gonna quit, you should have quit when you put your first grand in it. You you like you like twenty thousand deep now. You like ten uh, uh, nine thousand eight hundred hours deep into it. It only takes ten thousand hours. It is not the darkest moment that's the problem. You the problem, and your perspective is the problem. You thought you was just gonna have a dream and a goal, and you were just gonna wake up and just walk into the sunset. You're like, dream, boom. It don't work like that. You have a dream, and then life, life punks you. Life punks you and say, do you really want this? I'm gonna give your wife MS, do you really want this? Five of your aunts gonna die of cancer, do you really want this? You gonna lose friends, do you really want this? Your mama gonna be pissed when you write the book about your family, do you really want this? Do you really want this? Cousins gonna abandon you. People that you used to be like this with gonna think you bougie and don't wanna deal with you. That's, it's a part of it, but I paid too much. If I was going to quit, I would have quit in the abandoned building when I wanted to commit suicide and take my life. And I don't talk about that because I don't want to get nobody ideas. I should have quit when, when I heard my voice say, your mama don't want you, your own daddy don't want you, take your life. I got through that, so why I'm gonna quit over a grade, of an F on a grade? Why would I quit because I didn't do well on the master's degree, come on. And so I'm telling y'all, you have come too far to quit now. You have invested too much to quit now. You have lost too much to quit now. Get a, get a reward for your pain. Don't cry about it, don't whine about it. Get a reward for it. And guess what, people rock with me, because I know what you've been through and I didn't quit. I know what you've been through and I didn't stop. I know what you've been through and I didn't whine. You know what I did? I got my reward for it. And not only did I get a reward for it, my wife got a reward for it. My kids got a reward for it. They're gonna live a different life because of what I went through. And had I quit, I would have been just like my father who left me with nothing. I would have been just like my grandfather who quit. So I've been in circles and in families and environments where people take L's. I don't take L's no more.